All right, let's have a look at what's making news and print and online this morning. We're joined by journalist and blogger in the studio, Kirsten Prose. Good morning. Good morning. Great to have you here. Hey, listen, let's kick off with um, what's happening on the front of the age and the floods, bigger cheese. Yeah, that's right. I thought it'd be a good chance to show what's happening in the in the dairy industry. So obviously the floods are impacting everything right now and, and the focus has rightly been on the homes. But uh, at the bigger facility in Tatura, they've really had a, quite an emergency situation in terms of the power. So they have been having to move their milk to nearby facilities for some as far as Coroit, which is five hours away in the southwest of Victoria. Uh, look, and I checked in with Dairy Australia this morning and the power is coming back online there, which is good news. The power's a huge problem. Um, you know, for farmers, a, a lot of farmers um, don't have any power. Most farmers will have generators, but it's about 70% of farmers in the north of Victoria that have generators. And so for those that don't, they're having to dump milk at the moment, which is, you know, really disturbing um, to, to pull that down, you know. Yeah, the and so people who might not be as familiar as we are with your background, you are a resident of rural Australia, you married a farmer, you are very switched on with what is happening in the regions and we see the pictures, it's just devastating and you think about the farmers in those areas as well, we've looked at the towns but the farmers, that, that's a lot of, that's a repair job that could take a long time. Exactly. And look, I'm in the southwest of the state and we were spared the brunt of it. It's very wet. But, you know, the central Victoria and northern Victoria, obviously at the moment, it's it's really difficult there. And it's going to be ongoing. Um, we're in that emergency situation right now. And look, Vic Police are, are currently giving emergency assistance to milk tankers and, and livestock feed trucks that, you know, need to get in at the moment. So between Shepparton and Marupna, they're giving escorts. Um, you know, the roads, the floods, it's very difficult to get things through at the moment but fodder has been damaged as well like it's really waterlogged or it's just completely destroyed and that's going to be a huge problem ongoing you know cows eat grass but they also need a lot of grain mm. especially as it dries out so it's just not going to be around that that silage is destroyed and there's no chance to make hay or silage now mm. so it's going to the be ongoing. For that has passed right? yeah it's passed yeah. and it's wet yeah. you know like yeah. it's just going to be hard <sighs> let's move on to the next subject homelessness there's a story in the Sydney Morning Herald you wanted to highlight? Yeah, that's right. Look, um, it's election time in New South Wales. In, in March, they're having a state election. And there's a really interesting campaign that um, New South, Homelessness New South Wales is, is putting forward, which has a quite a creative way of looking at social housing, which is a problem across Australia, really. Um, you know, since the, ten, the pandemic about, um, you know, we've, we've lost a lot of that social housing or that, that pressure on rentals has really, really increased. So New South Wales, Homelessness New South Wales has put forward this idea, $1.2 billion plan that they're hoping either side of politics can really commit to, um, which will increase the social housing. They want to see 10% social housing. It's currently in New South Wales, it's 47 Across Australia, it's just over 4%. So that's lower than the OECD average of 7.1%. So we know we've got a problem, but the really creative suggestion um, by this group is about a levy. So a 1% levy on any project or subdivision that has three or more dwellings. Um, people don't like that. that in Victoria. <laughs> they tried to get it through in Victorian mm. state government here and then it was pulled at the last minute. So it'll be very interesting to see if that actually gets new legs in New South Wales. Mm. Mm. And obviously the federal government is, is needed in this as well, in this plan, in, in putting in, in the money. And I think the pressure will be on the federal government, really, if, if, this, if New South Wales does go down this line because it's the federal government that will then have to... All the other states will be there going, hey, what about us? Let's talk bomb. Yes. <laughs> what do you reckon? Oh, the name change. Mm -hmm. uh, look, I reckon the reason why there's resistance from people in the media is that none of us like to say Bureau of Meteorology. It's a tongue twister, right? And so for years, I've been saying the Weather Bureau to avoid having to say the Bureau of Meteorology, which is just a license to trip up on, on your words. Like, I really have to focus to say it. And we should say that you occasionally do weather for us here yes. when they are away. So, you know, you're not coming from an uninterested position here. And, and for those who've just joined us, the Bureau of Meteorology Meteorology has sent a note out to all media saying we're rebranding, don't call us the bomb, don't call us the weather bureau, call us the Bureau of Meteorology in the first instance and then the Bureau. So Mike, 
wrote in and said, BOM is a long-established acronym for the Bureau of Meteorology and they even use it in their own domain name, bomb.gov.au. Will NASA soon ask to be referred to as the National Aeronautics and <laughs> Space Administration too? <laughs> uh, quick one from Yvonne. Mind you, if they change their web address from bomb.gov.au, we would all need to learn to spell Bureau, yes. which is <laughs> a downside to that. And we do have the bomb standing by, actually, ready to... Oh, sorry, the Bureau, I should say. Oh, oh dear, Madeline. oh, dear. Madeline, the first I think the, hurdle. The bomb's a term of endearment now, almost. Like, I know it is there, it, or it was their official acronym, but I think it's kind of... It fits in with that Australian kind of slang and, yes, the, the word bomb makes no sense and it's not a positive word, but B-O-M, that's how we know it. And Twitter's had a field day, haven't they? I mean, people on Twitter have stolen the um, tagline, the Bureau, at the Bureau New South Wales, at the Bureau Queensland. Um, before the bomb or the bureaus had a chance to. Yeah, right. It's a bit of a bombshell. Hey, thanks very much for coming in. My pleasure. Thank you.